sure that the stream is starting first before I do that so I don't uh, I don't have to uh, you know redo everything I'm saying but um, so just give us a minute here uh, I always like to make sure that the stream is uh, gonna work right well you know the sound the video everything in between so it should be starting here in a few seconds good all right give me another few seconds while this ad <clears throat> uh, comes in and then we'll get started let me just make sure we're good to go all right it looks like we're good to go so thanks uh, for coming everybody today we are going to be talking about apps to learn essential skills uh, learning the piano but first I want to say thank you so much to uh, a regular attendee of ours, uh, Jeremy um, ASL, uh, who says, one of the best teachers I know just wanted to do this $200 super chat. Uh, thank you so much, Jeremy, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I don't know exactly what to say except for thank you so much. I really appreciate, um, you know, the contribution. And um, wow, like I, I just don't know what to say. But I'll accept it. I do know that... Um, one of the ways I always look at these kind of, kind of things is sometimes to receive a gift is to give a gift back, right? So if I didn't accept it, uh, you you know, that would probably pretty, be pretty bad. So I know it means something to you, you know, if I do accept it. So I'm going to. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that so much. Um, obviously, other students don't have to do something like that. But I do want to just take a few minutes to say thank you so much to Jeremy. Um, it means a lot. It really does. Um, I wasn't expecting it at all, so I'm a little bit thrown off. Uh, sorry if I appear that way. Um, and thanks, you know, uh, not only to Jeremy, but really anybody else that has uh, contributed towards the channel over the years, whether it's through a super chat, through purchasing courses over on the website, or um, just attending, you know, uh, watching my videos, attending the live streams, commenting. Those are all great ways to. Um, contribute to our wonderful community so i just want to take you know a few minutes to thank jeremy not jeremy but just everybody else so i think that's all i know how to do in response to uh, the 200 dollars super chat so thank you so much um yeah everybody a round of applause for our student jeremy thank you so so much all right so today um it is raining and dreary outside um but we have 45 people in here uh, which is great. It looks like we are, um, it's going to be a good lesson today. Um, let me get the Facebook stream started and uh, then we're going to get right on to with the uh, lesson. So here we go. And uh, welcome everybody else. I don't want to take too much time here, um, but, but welcome all these names. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, here we go. Give me uh, like 15 seconds to get the Facebook stream started and then uh, we'll get on with the lesson. And let me get her grab a drink. Hold on. Uh, Jeremy says, uh, Tim, you have done a lot and I'm glad to help out the best way I can. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Uh, once again, kind of at a loss for words a little bit, but uh, thanks. Let's, uh, let me figure out what we're doing. Uh, okay. Hello students, your piano teacher Tim here. Welcome out to our classroom piano lessons on the web. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you like our page. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. You have all notifications uh, turned on because we have new lessons coming out all the time and you don't want to miss a beat. Today we're talking about uh, helpful apps that will help you learn essential piano skills. So um, yeah, let me just get my notes out. And then we'll get right on to it and welcome everybody who is attending today. Let me fix one thing. There we go. Okay. Here we go. All right, here we go. I'm going to do a little intro and then um, I'll get the apps out and we'll take a look. All right. All right. There are, let me try again. 
There are five apps that I recommend that will help you practice essential skills to becoming a great piano player and great musician. Some of these in skills include reading music, sight reading, and ear training. Your piano teacher, Tim, here, of course, and before we begin, make sure you're subscribed. You have all notifications turned on because you have new lessons coming out all the time and you don't want to miss a beat. All right, on with the apps. Okay. Um, so we're probably going to be using this view for the most part because I do not have, I mean, I could have used an Android emulator, I guess. Um, I do not have a way to um, do video out on this thing. At least I don't think so. So I think this will work. Um, now my editor will, in like when the video is edited, will enlarge everything so you can see it. So I hope that kind of works. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? Just give me a second here. I have a better way of doing this. So just uh, let me do this. Perfect. And then sorry for the slight delay here. Ah, okay. I got it. That's not it. <laughs> uh, what's the z-axis? Okay, I need to cut. All right, there we go. That should be better. Um, sorry about the little delay there. I didn't really think about um, how that might come across. All right, I think this is pretty good. And then my editor can make this larger uh, when the edited version comes out. But I do want to make sure everybody can see what the heck is happening here. Okay, so let me get with the first app we have. Let me bring it up, and then we'll get on to it. So here we go. Get this thing out of the way. Actually, hmm, should be okay. Hold on. I gotta remember to hold my hand like that. All right, kind of a different experience. All right, here we go. Okay, the first app I'm going to talk about is Music Reading Trainer. This one is fun because it's it's a music reading app. But it has this really cool arcade mode, which really, really is kind of like, it kind of gamifies uh, the whole experience of reading music. Um, there's a classic mode, which is just pretty standard, you know, note drills, things like that. But you can go to the arcade mode. Let's check out Treble Clef. Now, here's the thing, is if you want to um, do a lot of this other stuff, you will have to pay about $3 or so. Um, but you can at least check out the app for free. So here you go. So these are the notes coming down and I have to hit them in the order that they appear there. Oops, I missed one. They only give you so much time. So, okay, oh my God, so fast. Oh my goodness, sorry. Uh... <laughs> Oops, I started reading it in the wrong class. See, so it goes so fast that you really, really, really have to keep up. The good thing about it, though, is um, you can Let me see this. You can mess with the settings a little bit. Like, say you only wanted to train. Um, oh, wait. No, no, no. That's not it. Never mind. It does not do that. Never mind. We're going to cut this We're gonna cut this little part out uh, with the, the options here. 
but it does give you a little bit of time so you don't have to go quite as fast as they come but it does only give you like that that little bar there at the top that is your amount of time that you have so you really got to go quick but it's really cool because like i said it kind of turns it into a game as well there's um classic mode where you can read you know very uh, simple stuff here it looks like a lot of these are free luckily for the classic mode um, or are they no they are okay just kind of walking you through how all this works might even cut that part out i don't know So the drills kind of just walk you through maybe like reading through two different notes. So if you want to start out a little bit, you know, simpler, it's even hard to hit just these two notes over and over and over again. But there you go. It's a really good way to um, drill your note reading, make it a little bit fun. Um, some of the more fun stuff and advanced stuff in this app do cost money, but it's not really that much. So this one uh, was called Music Complete Music Trainer. Okay, there is more stuff like on each of these apps, but I'm trying to, you know, make ample time for each app. So here we go with the next one. Oh, that's not the one I'm going to. Okay, for today. There we go. Okay. Okay, the next app is called Free Music Flashcards. So this is a lot like the app I just showed you, except it's a lot more plain, a lot more simple, and actually kind of a lot more boring, <laughs> unfortunately. But the thing about it is it's free, and it does the job. So, you know, you have to know your notes right there. But if you're like, okay, I only want notes on the staff. Wow, these settings are terrible. <laughs> what the heck? I thought there were more settings in this. Yeah, okay. So cut this whole part out too. My editor is going to be uh, having fun with this one. Okay, this one is a lot more simple. It does not really turn the whole thing into a game. Um, there's very limited things you can do with like the settings and things like that. The only thing you can really do in the settings is either show piano keys or like the letters of what the buttons are called. I recommend doing the piano keys. And the, again, it's limited. I really wish it had uh, more than one octave here, like say that's middle C and has another there. That way you can practice better like where it is on the piano. But unfortunately with this one, you just can't do it. You're just gonna be hitting, you know, that's an E. See again, like that was E, this one's E, and you only really have one place for it. So I don't recommend this one too much unless you don't have many other options. Okay, that one's a quick one, but you know, it does the job. Um, flow key is more like of a piano learning app. Okay, flow key. This one's a cool one if you want to learn um, basically some popular music or some you know music that people have heard you know a lot, like for Elise, for example. There are obviously free songs you can choose from, um, and then obviously the, some of the other ones you're going to have to pay for just like pretty much anything else in life so let's take a look at furry lease and i'll show you what the app is all about so it plays it and then you click learn song and here we go this might look it probably looks very similar to a lot of the um videos or the tutorials you've seen on youtube where it lights up the keys up top kind of has the sheet music on the bottom so i'm just going to press play we're just going to see what it does so here we go. You would follow along there. I recommend using the sheet music more than anything. Use the top part if you are um, lost for whatever reason. Now you may be saying, whoa, this is way too fast. Well, take a look here. There's a little, um, you know, speedometer there. And you can play it at 50% speed. You can also choose which hand to learn. Although I think that that doesn't really do anything except it, it lights up one hand or the other. I would just keep it on both hands, honestly, um, because either way it's going to be showing you both clefs with the top here. But here you go. So 50% speed. Unfortunately, 
when you do that the sound quality isn't as good but it, it does make it a lot more manageable and the cool thing about it as well is you can actually pause it and you can slowly scroll through the music like that and it scrolls through the video part as well so that is pretty cool i do like that one word of wisdom or one thing i want to tell you about this app is please don't use this app to learn piano entirely uh, if you want to learn a specific piece you know might want to check it out on a flow key see if it helps you learn that piece but don't get it like like i say this about synthesia all the time which is that um like the program where those colored bars come down and you got to hit them um it's it, if you become too dependent on it it will hurt your progress in the long run but it does have some utility and some uses uh, for learning piano especially if you concentrate on the bottom part here reading through the sheet music because that's really what you should be doing like i said don't cheat and look up top all the time you won't get nearly as much out of it but a very cool app and obviously you can play um many many different types of pieces um you know so here we go so here's perfect same thing you know and it just it gives you the lyrics as well if it's a uh a song type of piece or a song, I guess they call it, when you sing them. But very cool. But like I said, don't use it all the time. Don't use it as a crutch. Just use it every once in a while if you want to learn a specific piece. Pretty cool. All right. What I want to do is I want to make sure... Okay. All right. Everybody's good so far, I think. All right. 73. Wow. This, this lesson must be a popular one. This is great. This is by far the most people we've had in the group or the uh, thing ever. Um, all right. Cool. So one thing you guys might notice when I finish here, because we only have two more um, apps to go over, is I didn't want to go over too many apps because then the lesson would be really long. So you may notice that like you may have suggested a, uh, an app to me before that I'm not going to do today. I will do it at a later lesson. I'm going to do a part two to this video. So don't worry about that. I'm just telling you that ahead of time. All right, let's do some ear training. Oh my goodness, I'm the worst at ear training, but let's see. <laughs> see if we survive, huh? Um, here we go. I actually do like some of this stuff though. It's good, good practice. For sure. All right, here we go. What's this next one called? Um, hold on. Functional ear training. Oh yeah, yeah, it's that one. Okay. Okay, the next app is called functional ear training. We're going to be training. Guess what? Our ears. So let's take a look. <laughs> My phone turned off. I mean, luckily it didn't go out of batteries or anything. Just hold on. Okay. We're doing a functional ear training. And if you don't know, ear training is one of the more essential things you can practice on the piano because you can, um, it just gives your brain more information to go on. So you can both hear um, and correct yourself. You know, you'll know something is being played wrong. You'll also be able to replicate what you're hearing a lot better. A very useful skill to have, but it takes a long time to get used to this. So let's take a look. You can click on learn the method if you want to learn, you know, the basics behind ear training. But here we go. We're going to go into basic training. We're going to go to C major. The notes are all within one octave. And here we go. We're going to play. We're going to see what happens here. All right. So here what happened was is it played um, what we call a cadence, which are like the main chords. And then it plays a note. And you have to figure out like what note of the scale that that note was. It actually didn't give us the key, but I'm pretty sure it was the fourth one. And it was. Yep. And that was three, I think. Oh, good. I remembered something from ear training class. That was clearly like the, the starting note. You hear that? Two. Oh, I got him. Oh, I think it was four. Oh, yep, yeah, there you go. All right, stop. <laughs> All right, hold on. 
Uh, I just want to go back. Oh, let's go back here. Yeah, leave. It's fine. All right. I'm going to go into settings really quick. Okay, and in the settings, you can kind of adjust some things and maybe make it easier. You can kind of uh, give the notes a slower tempo if you want to give yourself more time to hear these. Um, to under to really get the most out of this app, though, I recommend learning your scales. You know, learning the sound of what those scales sound like, because then you can pick out. Okay, that's the third note of the scale down there. So it does take some getting used to and some time to get used to it as well. But a great, great thing for um, getting used to these different patterns, uh, recognizing these different patterns with your ears. Melodic dictations are the bane of my existence. And we're going to take a look at what they have here. So we're going to do this first one here. Now, what it does, let me explain it before I do it is it plays obviously the same chord pattern we were hearing before, but then it plays a series of notes. So this is the melody on top and it's a melodic dictation. You are literally figuring out um, what notes were being played. Oops. Oh, it only does that one. Oh, and then three of those. Okay, see, I was shifted down a little bit. Let's try another one. Hear that? That was the beginning of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So that's one, one, five, five. Oops. Got him. All right, I didn't fail that time. Let's try another one. Here, and then you may be wondering, like, how do I figure this out? Well, it starts out only giving you the selection of these three notes, the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. So it was doing, like, the first note of the scale, fifth note, uh, third, fifth. But if you really don't know much about ear training, do it this way. Hear the lowest note first, so that's down there, and then it went, bum, like, all the way up here. And then you hear that it did the note in the middle and then back to the top. So you can kind of use um, your pitch recognition in terms of like how far apart the notes are to figure this out. This is going to take a lot of time to get used to. And you're going to want to check out some ear training videos, practice some intervals before you really start doing this stuff. But if you're ready for that, it's super, super good for training your ears. All right, let's play around with some of the other features of the app. Surprised I remembered is well we only did level one I shouldn't toot my horn so much because <laughs> I haven't practiced a lot of this in a while um, okay no the melodic dictations I think we're good actually so I think we'll just move on to the next app which is actually my favorite one of all so far all right here we go all right okay now we're let me figure out what this is called first. Okay, now we're gonna do Perfect Ear, another ear training app, a little bit different. Let me show you. So here's Perfect Ear. And okay, so there's um, interval exercises. And actually, you know, I actually recommend you do Perfect Ear before maybe you practice on functional ear training, because this will help you identify different intervals. Um, I would even start out with interval reading, and then it'll show you seconds um, and, and unisons. So, um, if you don't know, if you play a note and then your friend plays the same note on a different piano or sings the same note, that's what's called unison. You might have heard the term singing in unison before, and that's what it's referring to. A second is just a note above that note. So it's probably going to have you identify whether it's a unison or a second. And, and the identification one is just on the sheet music. So you can actually, if you know how to read music... Um, play them like that and like oh those are two different notes so that's going to be what we call a major second meaning that it is two half steps above that again you need to you know a little bit of theory behind it beforehand um, let's do this next one f g flat 
see how they're right next to each other? That's a minor second. So it does a really good job at adding these things in a way that um, won't overwhelm you because you just go down the list here. Unisons and seconds, do all those, do the thirds, seconds and thirds. And then it goes through like all the intervals you're ever going to have to know, identifying them on paper. Although it does look, okay, it does look at a certain point that they want you to upgrade, but they give you a ton to start with. This is all the stuff that you're going to want to start with, you know, if you are just starting out learning um, your ear training. But that's not really ear training, identifying them on the sheet. You do want to start there, but then you want to go to uh, maybe interval comparison. And then what it's going to do is it's actually going to play it. Let me get the sound all the way up. All right, now they ask you, ah, it asks you what interval is larger. So let's play it again. So you may notice that the second interval was closer together because that's a minor second. First one was a major second. So the first interval's larger. I got it right. How about that? All right, second one was larger. So it, again, adds things in in a sequential way where it won't be too confusing for you. Again, scroll through these, you know, keep doing these exercises. Um, this actually adds in the ear portion rather than just identifying them. So very, very important stuff. And then my favorite, get ready guys, because I am not so good at this. <laughs> Uh, unison, what you're going to do is just use unison singing, and as you can see, I've actually done a lot of these already. Um, but all unison singing is, my favorite, is, okay, so now it's going to use the microphone on your phone to um, judge whether you are singing the right note. It even knows, like, how far away you are, basically. So let's give it a shot. All I have to do is reproduce what I'm hearing on the, the app here. Bum. Um, oh, I got it. And I was within two cents. There are these like little measurements they use. Okay, well, I actually did it. Um, oh, I was an octave low. Okay, see, I can't sing up that high. Um, there, it, there are... There definitely is. Hmm, let me have to... Bob. Oh, I did it. Okay. So sometimes it might not be in your range. You might have to use something called falsetto, where you have to sing up a lot higher or maybe even um, a lot lower than you are used to. I think there's options somewhere in here. I can't find it right now on how to um, set your range so that you're not singing those notes really high or really low. Let me take a quick look for that right now. Maybe we can edit that part in. Um, I saw it. I saw it um, when I was playing around with this. So I know it exists. Custom? No. Oh, exercise prep. Oh, that did. I read right over it. Maybe not. Weird. Okay. I swear it's here somewhere. <laughs> I swear there's a way to adjust. Uh, the range of these things but maybe we'll just leave that part out because it was just to kind of show you what that is but here you go all right this part will be in the lesson <laughs> okay and then after you can sing unisons just singing what you hear then you're going to be doing major and minor seconds this gets tricky okay it says sing a major second above the played note bomb bomb Bum. Oh, I did it. Oh, it was a major second, sorry. So clearly I need a little bit more practice on that. But that's what you're doing now is you're you're hearing the original note. They're showing you what note they want you to do. And then you have to sing that note without hearing it first. So then after the unison thing, it gets really, really tricky. But practice this stuff every day and it will get a lot easier. Okay. Well, even with... Uh, five apps it took you know 30 minutes to get through um, the lesson which is perfect because I think it'll edit together to be 15 minutes or so which is what we're shooting for 10 15 minute lesson anything over that like I said 
uh, people's attention starts to go way down. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, you know, kind of go through this stuff, see what you guys have to say about it. Oh, let me do this. I'm going to do like a little outro for a second. Um, I'm not leaving the live stream yet. This is when, this is for when we piece, uh, me and the editor, the editor mostly, <laughs> pieces together the lesson. It makes sense. So I'm not leaving. It'll sound like I'm leaving, but I'm not. Okay, so let me um, think about where I want to send you guys. All right. So now that you have a good selection of apps to choose from, make sure you check out the other lessons on the channel because you can learn a lot here just right on YouTube. So thanks so much for coming out today. It's been your piano teacher, Tim. Thanks so much and have a great day. All right, guys, I'm still here. Um, okay. All right, there's probably a ton. Uh, we're still here. Don't leave yet. Um, probably a ton of comments and stuff, I would think. Yeah, so we had 74 watching before, which is great. Um, okay, Fireflower. I'm going to read the comments from the bottom up, and I might not get to them all, so I do apologize in advance. Um, so somebody seeing Elvira. I remember Elvira. Perfect. Um, yeah, Perfect Deer was the last one we did. And then when we edit the video together, um, the name of the app will probably appear. Hint, hint to my editor, uh, you know, right as I introduce it so it will be easier to follow all right 20 likes guys let's get some likes on this video uh, here we go why is ear training important says Dinos very good question Dinos uh, ear training is important because like I mentioned before if you just learn how to read music it's giving you um, basically when you read music it's giving your brain a select select pieces of information to go on, right? You're like, okay, that's an F, it's right there on the sheet music, that next one's an A, that one's a C, things like that. And then you can check your playing by just checking what you're playing based on the sheet music. However, if you learn your ear training, you learn these different intervals, you learn all these things, this will really mostly make sense after you do it, but it's gonna give your brain more information to go on. So like, um, let me try to find like a good example for you. So say like I have some sheet music and it wants me to play this pattern here. Just that, right? And I see that on the sheet music, I can replicate it. But if I know like about my major scales, my major chords, my major thirds, I can actually, first of all, if somebody plays it, I can play it back and replicate it on my piano on my own. So that kind of gives you a little bit more to go on. But it also helps me make sure I'm playing the right notes without having to double check the notes all the time. Because I'm like, okay, it's supposed to sound major, and it does. So that's just a very simplified way, um, explanation of how ear training can help you. There's many, many more reasons to do it. Um, a lot of students I find e are either ear people, where they're be way better at um, using their ears than using like theory, and sheet music, and then there are sheet music people and theory people like myself that are much better at that side of it and then need to work on the ear training. I recommend the ear people work on the theory and the note reading more, and I recommend that the note reading theory people work on the ear training more. Are there people that are good at both? Yeah, unfortunately, <clears throat> but not me. <laughs> Just kidding around, of course, but um, yeah, so. Let me get on to maybe some more things here. I won't be able to get to everybody. Uh, I don't know if anything anyone is interested in, but for books and documents, learn from Udemy. Has a few courses. I have a few courses on Udemy as well. They're the same courses I have on my website, though. I just kind of use Udemy as another platform. I haven't really been putting too many courses on it recently. Erica says, I just joined. Welcome, Erica. You kind of caught us at a little bit at the end here, but not too bad. Um, yeah, we got Fireflower back here again. Uh, Kathy's is my subscription to, um, I forget, it was one, another app you were mentioned is canceled. It helps when you're picking out a melody. Very true, says Charles, um, what Charles said. Okay, just going through here, like I said, I'm not going to get to all of them. I do apologize for that. Uh, let's see. Simply Piano. Okay, I was talking, Kathy's talking about Simply Piano. I didn't do Simply Piano. Um, to be honest, they advertise a lot of my videos, and I kind of find it annoying. 
and I've heard mixed things about them. I, I didn't have a chance to kind of like look at it myself, um, so that's why it was not included today. Uh, okay, but it automatically renews your subscription unless you stop in the App Store. Yeah, there's a lot of apps, unfortunately, these days that do that. Uh, I don't like that. Unless unless there's like a, an option to. Like if there's a little thing you click, like, yeah, automatically renew. Because then it's my choice. I, I don't like these automatic renew things because it's kind of sneaky, I think. I don't think it's intentionally sneaky, but it just is. Because it kind of banks on you forgetting <laughs> about it. Flow key for life. Great. Glad you liked it too. I thought that one was a cool one. Just remember not to use it too much. Uh, perfect ear app. I like that was my favorite one. Only added a couple weeks so far. Um, so good. I agree. Manga World Collection says, What's name of app? Well, there was quite a few of them. <laughs> the apps I talked about today, I can give you the list because I do have it in front of me here. Um, the apps we talked about today, the first one we did was Complete Music Trainer. That one is the one that had like the arcade mode where you're reading music and basically, you know, playing what's on the page. It kind of makes it a little bit more fun. Second one was free music flashcards. Very simple, basic app. Does not have the uh, setting options that I would like. Um, but if uh, you're looking for something free, something quick, it does do the job. Uh, Flow Key was the third one, which was the one where um, it, it that plays a sheet of music, like a popular piece of music, and you just play along with what the video is doing and what the sheet music is doing. That one's good. Don't overuse that one because it will hurt you in the long run. Uh, Functional Ear Trainer is great um, for picking out uh, what notes are being played in a selection. So it gives you like that chord progression. And then it gives you like what note within that progression you're going to be hitting. You have to have pretty decent ears to do that. And you may have heard that. So here we go. Let me show you, actually. So you may have heard that that's the third note of the scale. So that's how that one works. You got perfect ear, which uh, that one um, has a couple of different options on what you can do. You can identify intervals by sight or um, identify them being played. But the best one, which is actually the hardest one, is it uses the microphone in the phone to judge you know like how accurate you are because you have, then you have to sing back what it's asking that one's probably the most advanced one which is why it's last uh, the first thing you need to learn is the blues okay I do recommend learning the blues even if you're a um, classical player for sure download the ear training app while you're talking demonstrating fast download very true yeah the ear training one's good synthesia is pretty decent um, I kind of want to make a video on synthesia at some point just that one because I get a ton of questions about it I get a lot of people who um, are a little bit misinformed about it what was that um, because they will use just Synthesia to learn all their piano pieces, and I don't recommend that. However, I've told students in the past to just completely stay away from it. However, I'm kind of changing my mind a little bit. I do think there are some uses for it, and so I do want to make a lesson. I would make that lesson just on that for sure. All right, uh, but... Do I offer live lessons uh, to work with people on what they need to improve on, or is it just uh, documentation and videos on how to? Yeah, it's mostly, um, so it's, what I do is I do the YouTube thing, the live class here. Other than that, I don't do anything else live one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the main reason behind that is there's only so many hours in a day. As you can imagine, I get a lot of requests to do this, and if I took them all, um, don't get me wrong, it would be great but then I wouldn't have time to make videos. So I kind of have to make a decision based on my time on what services I want to do. So what makes more sense to me is over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, I have over 20 courses that you can take. So these are pre-recorded videos. However, you can ask me questions along the way. You can contact me um, through email. You can contact me through Skype if you really need something a little bit more direct for a few minutes, just to ask a couple of questions. I'd be, definitely be willing to do that. Um, and then 
let's see. Oh, and then those are like instructional videos along with notes, worksheets, practice assignments, and uh, real sheet music to play. So that's the difference between that and YouTube, where YouTube I just usually cover something once, um, and then I usually move on, don't give you a whole lot to practice. So piano lessons on the web.com. If you want to check that out, um, code YouTube during checkout to get 15% off. I have left up the fall sale. Uh, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. I left up the fall sale until, I actually didn't write this on the website, I just left it up, until the end of the day today. Yeah, because it's Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it will end today, actually. I just left it up there just in case anybody wanted to um, grab a hold of it. I know I did get a few emails of people who have not got a chance to sign up yet, but you can go on my website, read all about it. One thing I want to show you guys, this is, wait, I didn't even do the right thing. Here's my website, <laughs> and you can read all about the courses and everything. Um, okay, the community tab is what I want to talk about right now while we're wrapping up here in the next the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, okay, so ask for learning piano today, and then the last two of October are the best way to count 16th note patterns and syncopation, so um, two rhythm lessons to finish out the month. And then just check back every once in a while, and I will fill out the calendar for November. I have a pretty good idea on what I want to cover. Uh, I just need to figure out the order and everything. So with YouTube, strategy I find is everything um, and being, not everything, but very important in being successful because I used to when I first started I'd put out lessons and not like really think too much like about the strategy behind it I actually there was times where I would do a lesson I'd record a lesson and I had no idea what lesson I was going to do until like I sat down to do it I'd be like what should I do a lesson on uh this and that just never works out you always want to plan do everything um in advance and really put some thought behind it okay you can also bet there will be a 2-5-1 progression in the song, Fire Flower. What is the song called? Probably. Um, all right, I can't get into that conversation because that will take <laughs> they'll take forever for me to find and, and do. So I apologize. Um, I just joined the chat. I must thank you for all the informative videos. You're very welcome. Mostly the fact that your lessons gave me the courage to go back and play again my piano for so many years. That's an amazing comment. I really uh, take that with pride. Thank you so much. That's just like everything I really shoot for when I make videos. So thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, sorry. Okay. Do you offer? Okay. I answered that one. It's okay if you want to mention me directly. Just don't be too. No, it's just. I don't want to tell everybody to do it though, because then it's just it's gonna kind of defeat um, the purpose at all. Uh, perfect pitch. Yeah, I kind of wish I had perfect pitch. The thing to understand about having perfect pitch, though, as a teacher, is I found that teachers that have perfect pitch, like, because, if you don't know what perfect pitch is, like, somebody can recognize a, a note without the piano even in front of them. So if, like, I played this, and they weren't even in front of a piano, they'd say, oh, that's an A, and that's so far up the piano, and they would know exactly where it is. They would know, like, what chords I'm playing, everything. And they don't really need to learn a whole lot of the theory and everything behind it. The problem with those kind of teachers, in my opinion, I'm not speaking for all of them either, but from what I've seen is they, again, I, I did mention this earlier in the lesson, they re rely very much on their ears, so much so that I think they struggle a little bit more with the theory stuff. They also have struggle. I remember uh, my girlfriend in college had perfect pitch, and I would ask her for help on the orals course, which is the ear training and all that stuff. And she would just be like, doesn't the note just appear in your head? And it's like, uh, which isn't the greatest thing for, you know, a teacher. Like, well, you know what I mean? Because, like, if somebody who has really struggled to learn something and really figured out, like, all the tricks that help them learn, I find that in that instance, they might be a better teacher. Might be. It depends. It depends on the student as well. You know, a perfect pitch teacher might work with re really well with a perfect pitch student because they're on the same frequency you know, of thinking. So let me turn my phone sound back off because it is buzzing and it's all that stuff. Um, okay. <laughs> Try not to, I don't know, show you guys anything. Not that there's really anything on there, but um, yeah. <laughs> 
Just kind of going through here some more. Uh, Johnny May looks at his hand and playing ragtime. I was stunned when mentioned in an interview. Well, you know what? If you're playing a piece where you're like up and down the piano all the time, you are going to have to glance down at least uh, every once in a while. Uh, do I recommend to go to a piano lesson? This is a great question. Or learn piano lessons online. I actually recommend you do both if you can. Uh, so if you don't have access to a teacher, teachers are expensive. The one-on-one -on -one private lessons can be very expensive, especially over time. Um, you will get the most out of that in terms of getting direct feedback. So if you can't afford that, go for it. But that doesn't mean that if you get a teacher, you can't do online learning as well because it can be a great supplementary resource. So say your teacher is teaching you music theory and you take a music theory course online, you can do both of those at the same time and you're going to, um, you might learn some things that your teacher didn't mention and you also will get some reinforcement. So you'll be reading and be like, oh yeah, we covered that in the lesson, that's great and, and everything like that. Because music is so important to not just learn like one thing and then move on. You wanna learn something and you wanna practice it over and over and over again until you master it. That's so, so important when learning music. Let's take a look here. Um, it's only on the count of 10 that I don't cry over music theory any longer. In fact, just the opposite. Now I love it. That's great, Karen. I'm glad to hear that. Is music theory a good app? Possibly. I don't know which one it is. Uh, Tim, please put the app list in your description. Okay, well, I'm going to do that right now because I will forget otherwise. My student Becky always uh, berates me for forgetting. I'll be like, yeah, I'll remember. She goes, no, you won't. <laughs> You're not going to remember. All right, here we go. You know, I could remember everything up until a few years ago. And my memory, I swear, is just as good. I don't have trouble actually remembering stuff, but I do have, like, there's so many, like, little things a lot of times that um, I overlook. So let's see. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this part here, and I'm just going to, wait, no, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so it's going to appear in a, a minute or so towards the bottom of the description, and then it's going to give you like a little bit, basically my notes on each one as well. There you go. It should appear any second. All right. So uh, you're, you'll probably have to refresh the page as well. Love, love, love your lessons. Thank you. You're very welcome, Mary C. Um, Charles Smith says, I like it for finding chords. Perfect. Uh, Zaynep says, what is the difference between perfect pitch and absolute pitch? Um, I think they're the same. Does it take a lot of time to be good at perfect pitch? Perfect pitch, believe it or not, um, for most people is something they're born with or something that develops very early on in childhood. It is very, I think it's even like impossible to develop true perfect pitch. However, if you get really good at ear training, you can develop what's called relative pitch where if I give you like the first note, you know, um, or, or say I do this, all right, I'm playing in the key of F. And I say, all right, sing an A. Well, if I give you that starting note, starting chord, you would be able to sing that A because you have the starting note to go on. So therefore your pitch is relative to where you're starting on. However, somebody with relative pitch, if they turn away from the piano and I play this, they're probably not gonna get the right answer unless they're lucky or sometimes if you play a song a lot in a certain key like for release like I might be able to recognize E because it's the first note of the um, song piece sorry I'm gonna get scolded for saying song rightfully so and yeah so people with perfect pitch can pick that stuff out without any kind of reference Relative pitch, people need a reference to go on. 
Just bought a keyboard last week, struggling, starting out. Well, perfectly understandable. Uh, one thing I want to do really quick, guys, is I want to... There we go. Okay, I want to change the scenes back. So when I do future lessons, it's not all out of whack. Uh, but yeah, this raid is making me kind of sleepy. I'm confused on playing sharps. I don't know how to begin playing, says Jenny. Okay, that's a loaded question, but I'm confused about playing sharps. So what you want to do is like a little uh, pro tip for anybody who is in attendance today is let me show you here. So on YouTube, what you want to do, so say you want to learn how to play sharps. So type in sharps and then type in piano lessons on the web. You can do this with anything you're wondering if I have a lesson on it or not. Just type in what you want and then piano lessons on the web. Hit enter. And oh hey, um, I have a lesson just on playing sharps. It's a bit old, but it's still a good one. So I would check this lesson out. I'm going to get you a link to this right now. Um, and I'm going to put it in the chat here. So that's where you want to check that out because Otherwise, it would take, whoa, what the heck? It would take a long time. I don't know, I just kind of trailed off because something appeared on the screen. Hold on. Uh, okay, I'm playing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I want to give you the link to the lesson because otherwise it would take a long time to explain. Here you go. I have a feeling that I'll never be able to play piano. Well, not with that attitude, you won't. So um, there's an old saying that's kind of cheesy, but it makes a lot of sense. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're probably right. So start thinking that you can do it. Start from the bottom up. Don't start playing uh, Moonlight Sonata right away unless you're, you know, pretty, um, you got a lot of natural talent. I do get some people, oh, I could play for at least my first week or play, uh, uh, Moonlight Sonata or any of that stuff and it's like yeah but you probably can't play it well I mean and if you can then congratulations you have um, probably above average learning ability <sighs> all right uh, I got a keyboard yesterday and we must be boring put we put the host to sleep I went, I went to sleep. Oh, because I said I was sleepy. Uh, okay, try Tim's early YouTube lessons. They're really good for beginners. Yeah, so there... Yeah, there's something called the... Um, let me just show you. Something called the Learn to Play Piano Series. It's like the first thing I did here on YouTube. Let me see if I can find... Ah, okay. So if you go on the main... That's not it. <laughs> You go on the main channel page, you scroll down a little bit. Uh, you see that we're live right now, of course, you know that. Uh, the lessons that have recently come out. I'm getting better with the thumbnails, I must say. And uh, then you have this section that says beginner start here. All right, watch those first few videos. Um, that will help you get started for sure. Oh, did I take out the learn to play piano series? I need to add that back in. If you go to the playlists and you go to like one of the first ones I ever made, there you go, learn to play piano course. So it's all, you can find it on the playlist tab and then you scroll down here almost to the bottom. It's the first, first real playlist. I mean, I have the announcements there. Um, and then I don't even remember a monthly contest giveaway. <laughs> what? I don't remember doing that, but that was, that was a long time ago. 2013 uh, okay oh you know what? I was probably giving away something to um, access to the website or something because I was like I don't know shipping anything out uh, okay learn to play piano course check that out all right guys we got three minutes uh, remaining in the um, lesson and let me kind of just take a look really quick. Yes, I'm at Piano Lessons on the Web 2 and satisfied. Okay, great. Great to hear that, Kathy. Learning a lot. My progress is slow, but it's me. You need a lot of patience and don't give up quickly. I agree. Okay. 
Okay, ba ba ba. I just ordered a methods book. Good supplement? Question mark. Yes, probably. So let's see here. John. John had a question of some kind. Struggling starting out. Okay. All right, everybody. I can't get to every comment. Uh, before we end today, I do want to just give another minute or so to thank Jeremy so much for his uh, very, very generous $200 Super Chat. Uh, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciated it. Um, you know, and the channel really would not be where it is without students like Jeremy and students that have signed up through the website. Other students have given Super Chats. But not only those students, you know, I, I do recognize that contributions can go far beyond money. Um, I do, you know, thank the people that just attend on a regular basis or just attend at all, watch my videos, like, subscribe, you know, um, and then, you know, uh, even help each other in the comments, which is one of my favorite things to see. So thank you for everybody for their contributions, especially Jeremy today. Uh, he deserves an extra shout out and um thank you so much guys really appreciate it still a little stunned i was not expecting that today uh jeremy says that you're very welcome tim i'm very happy to help uh out i wanted to do that well thank you so much jeremy really appreciated it okay if you intend to get a christmas sheet music from a public library get it now yeah because it'll probably be out you know i worked for a public library for seven years so that was actually my job before. Uh, I had a little job in between, but uh, that's pretty much my job before I became a piano teacher as I worked at a public library. And I liked it at first, but um, after a while, well, after I got my music degree, I didn't like it anymore because I felt like I should be doing something music related. So that's, that's all. But yeah, get that, get your stuff from the public library, put it on hold. People still use public library? Yes, they do. Mary C says, how do we donate? I'm not sure if it'll show up for you, Mary, but if you go right below um, the chat here, it'll probably have your name and, and it'll say, say something. You click on, um, it says, show your support for piano lessons on the web. You click that. And you can either do a super sticker or a super chat. A super sticker, obviously, you'll do, um, it'll just have an animated image, which I don't think anybody's done yet. That's so weird. Okay, they just added super stickers. So <laughs> you can click on whichever one you want to give. Like if you wanted to give 50 bucks, you could do that. Or if you wanted to give $2, you could do that. But what most people do and what they had before are um, super chats, which is what Jeremy did. And you just say like the amount you want to give. So, um, you know, $2 or whatever. I was going to do a joke and write in like $2 million, but... <laughs> Uh, two dollars. You can type in your message, and uh, it will become public. Um, although we are at the end of the live stream here, so your message will only be up for a little bit. But do not fret. But you can do that. Um, probably the best way, other than that, is to go to my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, and sign up for my courses. Like I said, the Fall sale was supposed to end quite a few days ago, almost a week ago now, but I kind of just left it up so students could grab a hold of it. I, this will be up until the end of the day, the sale. I mean, you can still grab the courses after this. Um, you can also use code YouTube during checkout for 15% off, so that's a great way to do it as well. So this is another great way to um, invest both in the channel and your music education at the same time. Recently bought a Yamaha P45. Excuse me. Um, came with three months of flow key. Is it good? Yeah. I'd say you made a good purchase. Yeah, try flow key and find out for sure. Hi, host. I'm from Philippines. Hello, Dandry. Danry. Glad to have you with us. Hey, thank you so much, Mary. I really, really appreciate it for the, the $20 super chat. I do like the um, dancing pear. I think it's a pear, actually. At first, I was just kind of joking around, but I think it's actually a pear. Uh, thank you so much. It says, you are, are amazing. I really appreciate that. Uh, I mean, is it better to read sheet music on your own? Um, yeah, well, like I mentioned in the lesson, I recommend you rewatch this because uh, I did mention that earlier in the lesson that you want to mostly learn how to read music on your own. And then use Flowkey um, just to kind of learn some songs you might want to learn that are popular. 
um, or maybe learn like a few songs there, but don't rely strictly on flow key. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign out today. Uh, thank you so much for coming. It's been another great lesson. Remember to leave a big fat like on the video. I am, um, oh, we got 31. Nice. And we had a lot of attendees today. So I, I suspect when I put this lesson up, people will definitely like it. So let's adjourn for today. I'll see you guys next Friday where we're going to be doing some kind of rhythm. Le oh, how to count 16th notes. And then syncopation will be the next one. So Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll see you there. Thanks for so much for coming by today, everybody. Have a great week, and I'll see you on Friday. Thanks again real quick to Jeremy and Mary C. Thank you so much. All right, guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. You're very welcome for your the advice. 31 likes, it only shows one on my end. Oh, uh, refresh the page. You know, it used to automatically update the likes, and now it doesn't for some reason. But anyway, you're welcome, guys. I'll see you soon.